So tell me, what is the difference between Mario Kart and another generic racing game? Obviously, it's the frantic action caused by the many items being thrown left and right. The banana peels, the green shells, the red shells, and uh, even the blue shells. But what if we decided to purposely avoid those item boxes? Would it actually be possible to beat all of the tracks and finish in first place? Well, we're gonna be trying that today. Don't worry Mario, I won't force you to dodge any coins today, isn't that nice? The rules are simple. We're gonna be playing every tracks in Mario Kart Wii and we're going to have to dodge any item boxes. We cannot touch those rainbow flashy question blocks, no matter where they are. If we touch one of those, we have to start the track over. We are gonna be playing all of those tracks individually with the versus mode, which forces us to play the tracks at 100cc in this version of the game. Any strategy is allowed in order to dodge those boxes. That's it! Now that everything has been set, it's time to see if it is possible to beat Mario Kart Wii without touching an item box and therefore without using any items. Here we go! Luigi Circuit is our first stop, and to be fair, this track is so wide that dodging item boxes is no problem at all. You can actually just go to the left or to the right of the track to dodge the item boxes. You won't even have to lose speed by going on the grass or the dirt because of how wide the side of the track is, so you know, that's kinda nice. Moo Moo Meadows won't be as nice as Luigi Circuit in terms of width as this track features some very narrow paths with item boxes. You can actually just barely squeeze in between the left block and the wooden fence to dodge the first two sets of boxes. But then, there are four boxes located on top of the ramp, but if you angle yourself correctly, you can actually gain some speed for the jump while dodging all of the boxes, so you know, that's cool. Mushroom Gorge is up, and the first set of item boxes can be avoided by rolling to the left or to the right in the grass. Then the next set of item boxes is located on top of those mushrooms that bounce you in the air. But thankfully, you can actually dodge the boxes if you stand to the very edges of the mushroom. And for the next boxes inside of the cave, you'd want to do a very similar strategy. You know, bouncing near the edges, and that's it, you'll be good. I strongly suggest taking the right path over here because the left one is way trickier and features more boxes. Our next up is Toad's Factory, and this one is actually easier than it looks. Basically, the first set of boxes are so spread out that you can actually just go around or in between them. The next boxes are located on treadmills moving left and right, so you can dodge them if you just do the same, moving left and right. The final boxes that could prove to be trouble are located at the end of this tunnel, but you can actually dodge those item boxes by touching the boost panel when you're all the way to the right. And there you go. Mario Circuit is up, and this one will prove to be a little bit annoying. To dodge the first set of boxes, you'll actually have to go on the grass to the left or to the right, slowing you down quite a lot. The second set is actually spread out wider than the first one, so you can actually just go in between the boxes without touching them, which is good. But sadly, we won't be lucky with those boxes in the tunnel. In fact, you can't go in between, you can't go to the left, you can't go to the right. You're actually forced to make sure another driver is with you so that he can actually clear out the way for you. Yeah, that's kind of annoying. Finally, the last set of boxes is moving left and right on the track, so just dodge them and you'll be all good. Let's go shopping in Coconut Mall, and let's enter by going in between those item boxes near the beginning. Then the next set is located on top of that fountain, so just go around and you're done. The same goes with this second fountain. And now in this path, Anyway is actually okay, if you decide to go to the left and go up, you'll have to dodge those item boxes by going all the way to the left part, but if you decide to instead use the right path, well, you'll have a blast knowing that the item boxes here are so far from one another that you can basically drive anywhere and you won't touch any of them. DK Summit is the next up, and this snow-filled scenery truly reminds me of home, ah, oh, Canada. So the first set of boxes is located right at the beginning near the gates allowing you to hop in the DK barrel. 
just squeeze in between the boxes and then in between the gates and that's it. The next boxes are located on top of a ramp, but you can thankfully just jump to the left or to the right to dodge those boxes easily. And then most of the boxes remaining on this track are located on top of those ramps you're supposed to trick off of, just avoid them, don't trick and that's it. Wario's Goldmine is next, and this one is quite annoying. The first set of boxes proves to be trouble, because it is located down that ramp over there and there's actually no way to dodge them all, you'll actually need some of your opponents to clear out the path for you. And the next set of blocks also requires you to have someone in front of you to clear them, cause you know, when you jump and you trick like that, you basically are forced to grab one of those boxes, so you really need somebody to take them for you. Near the end of that ramp, there are some boxes to the right that prevent you from going there, but thankfully, there's a shortcut over there to the left, which will prove to be quite helpful to dodge those pesky item boxes. Daisy Circuit is up, and this one starts off with a bunch of annoying boxes, but thankfully, your opponents can clear them out for you during the first lap. Pro tip, do not take the shortcut up the staircase there, as it contains a shiny yet deadly item box at the end. Those next boxes are so spread out that you can actually squeeze in between them, so that's kinda good. Now, if you remember correctly, those boxes near the beginning were quite annoying, but for lap 2 and 3, you can actually get on the sidewalk over there to dodge them all, which proves to be quite helpful and way easier than trying to squeeze in between. Let's go to Koopa Cape, and this one does prove to be annoying because of this first set of bugs, which is once again located right after a boost pad. You'll need some buddies to clear out those boxes for you, or you know, you can actually just jump all the way to the right and fall down and then wait for Lakitu to bring you back in the track, but it wastes precious seconds. When you're going down in the water over there, there are a couple of boxes moving along with the water current, so be on the lookout as they can sometimes be quite annoying to dodge. This final set of bugs at the end of the underwater tunnel can be completely avoided by hugging the left or the right wall. Welcome to Maple Treeway, where you'll find many annoying boxes to dodge. The first set can be dodged by going to the left, and the same thing can be said about the second one, but make sure not to trick off this wall over here to dodge the boxes over it. And now comes the very tedious part. You see those boxes on the tree trunk? They're super tough to dodge, okay? Like, really difficult. You barely have enough space to fit to the left, and you also need to have enough speed to land on the net over there right after it. This one takes some time, it's really annoying, but eventually, you'll figure it out. Grumble Volcano is up, and this one scared me at first, because the track gets smaller as you race on it, with pieces falling down and disappearing completely. But thankfully, none of the part that fall down in the lava prevents you from dodging the boxes. So you know, dodge this one by going to the left, and this one by timing your jump correctly, then over there take the left path, as it's the easiest one of the two, and then I recommend falling down on the right path over there to dodge those two boxes, and finally, keep your left to dodge the final set of boxes, and voila, you are done. Dry Dry Runes is up, and this level is super wide near the beginning, so dodging those boxes will be no challenge. But once inside the pyramids, you'd want to dodge those boxes up there, but if you don't trick off the wall, you'll be slowed down quite a bit. So you know, I suggest doing a trick, but near the very end to avoid touching any boxes and to avoid touching the sand that slows you down. Exit the pyramid by going all the way to the left to dodge those big bad boxes, and this track is now done. Moonview Highway is up, and to be fair, this one is super easy. Just know that there are no item boxes in the way of the cars, meaning that if you roll in the middle of your lane like a normal human being should, you're never gonna have any problem whatsoever. Near the end, some of the item boxes are moving along on the highway, but you can easily just dodge them and go around them, so no worries. Bowser's Castle is next, and this one is not that easy. First off, this ramp at the beginning will force you to stay all the way to the left to dodge the evil boxes. And then, there's this twisting hallway with boxes twisting with it. It's super precise, but you can actually fit just in between the boxes. But if you have a trusty enemy to grab the boxes for you, that's even better. 
In the big hallway with the Bowser statue spitting fireballs, you'll want to trick off those purple ramps but not super high to avoid grabbing the boxes. You'll also want to avoid this happening. <laughs> Are you okay, Bow Bow? You need help? Make sure to be super close to the left or to the right near the end of this tunnel as there are three deadly boxes waiting to be collected. Do the same over there to dodge them all and you're done. We finally arrive at Rainbow Road and the first set of box is located down the first ramp but you can squeeze in between those boxes by being super careful. Then the next set are bouncing over there in the middle of the track, so you know, just stay to the left to the right and you'll be all good. Fitting in between those boxes over there is far from easy, but it is actually possible if you slow down and take your time. Finally, going left or going right over there doesn't matter, as both those paths contain three boxes. But thankfully, you can dodge them by staying close to the edges while taking the jump. And there you go, we have completed all of the tracks. So now we're entering the retro tracks, starting off with GameCube Peach Beach, which is pretty wide, so you won't have any problem finding a spot to dodge those pesky items near the beginning. Now, you might think it's a bad idea to go to the left part over there, and while yes, it is a bad idea, please note that it is possible to actually take the jump without touching any item boxes. While going up the pathway over there, there's gonna be boxes moving left and right, that can be annoying to dodge, but nothing that isn't possible with a little bit of practice. DS Yoshi Falls is a walk in the park. Like really, the track is really wide, you just go in between all of the boxes, and yeah, there's no challenge in here. SNES Ghost Valley 2 is not as easy sadly, as this first set of boxes cannot be dodged, so you'll need some friends to clear them out for you. These items moving in circle around there are kinda spooky, but in fact you can completely ignore them just by sticking to the right wall over there, yeah. The final set of boxes will be moving left and right, so it can be scary but do not panic, just avoid them and that's all there is to this track. N64 Mario Raceway is next, and basically for this one, you'd want to dodge all of the boxes by going in the grass to the left or to the right. That's all you need to do for all of the boxes set on this track. Like literally, they're all the same. N64 Sherbet Land is the next stop, and as you can see, this ice platform is super wide, so you'll have plenty of space to dodge this set of items and this one too. Once inside the cave, you'll have to make sure not to touch any of those boxes over there near the penguin and that's it. GBA Shy Guy Beach is quite the annoying track, but it's mostly caused by those exploding boulders and those annoying crabs. In terms of items, there won't be much of a challenge to be honest. Just dodge all of the boxes by going to the left or to the right and you'll be done in no time. DS Delfino Square is up, and this first set of item boxes cannot be dodged to the right, but I found out that you can slow down immensely to fit right there on the left. While highly impractical, at least we can do it. Once you arrive at this cross path, going left will make you dodging those boxes more difficult than it should be. It can be done as you can see, but look at the way these boxes are aligned if you just take the right path instead. Yeah, it's way easier, so the right path is definitely the way to go. This final set of item boxes is super annoying to dodge, but as you can see, if you slow down and you go right there, oof, it can be done. Whew, that was nerve-wracking. GameCube Waluigi Stadium is actually quite a fun stage. That is, if you manage not to get hit by a million shells at once. Most of the boxes are located on top of the little jumps, which means you can dodge them all by going left and right. The same thing can be said for the boxes located on the big jumps. Just make sure you're not jumping right into them and that's pretty much it. DS Desert Hills is a pretty simple stage, as the first set of items can be dodged by going in the sand next to them. You can also dodge the item boxes on top of the jump there by going all the way to the right. It's kinda tricky to pull off, but you can do it. The rest of the item boxes are super easy to dodge, and they're not even worth talking about. GBA Bowser Castle 3 does feature a couple of different types of item boxes. The first set here can be dodged by staying on the grid above the lava to the left. 
and this next one looks impossible to dodge, but turns out we can actually fit in between the boxes. Those next items bounce like fireballs coming out of the lava, but you can dodge them all if you're being extra careful. And next up, there are these boxes going left and right that are pretty annoying. And then, once you think you're safe, there's this part here where you have to hug the wall to the left. This track is kinda difficult to be honest. N64 DK's Jungle Parkway does force you to go in the grass to dodge this first set of items boxes. Once on the other side of the river, you'll have to keep hugging the dirt over there to dodge them. That's pretty much what you're gonna have to do for all of the remaining boxes to be fair. GameCube Mario Circuit is not going to be very complicated. Most of the boxes are located on the track, so if you go a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right, you'll be able to dodge them all. And finally, for this part on the sand here, you can easily avoid the boxes by going in between them. SNES Mario Circuit 3 will be completed using the exact same strategy we just did because all of the boxes are located on the track, so just go around and that's it. DS Peach Gardens is your next stop, and the first set of item boxes on this bridge can be dodged by hugging the very edge of said bridge. It is super precise, but it can be done. The next boxes are following the chain chumps in the maze, so if you avoid those bad boys, you'll also avoid those bad boxes. And finally, you can dodge this last set of item boxes as there's plenty of room to do so. GameCube DK Mountain will be a little bit annoying climbing up the mountain, as you'll need to go in the grass next to the track to dodge those first boxes. Once you're out of the cannon, you'll need to go down the mountain and I strongly suggest not using the wooden platforms over there as they feature those deadly item boxes. The rest of the boxes on the track can be dodged by rolling in the grass and that's pretty much it. Our final stop today is N64 Bowser's Castle and the first set of item box here needs to be dodged by going in the grass around the boxes. By the way, did you know that the giant fire spitting statue of Bowser can actually hurt you? I always thought it was just for shows, but no, if you dodge them to the left, you get hit. So just, you know, go around to the right. These boxes in this narrow hallway move left and right, so it's kinda spooky to dodge them all, but it's doable. The next boxes are located down the staircase over there, but thankfully you can fit in between the boxes and the wall without collecting them, so that's cool. And finally, there's a couple of boxes on top of the tower after the jump over there. It is a super difficult maneuver, but you can actually manage to dodge all of the item boxes and land on the castle by going all the way to the left over there. And there you go, we have completed all of the tracks in Mario Kart Wii. So, is it possible to beat Mario Kart Wii without touching an item box? Well, yes it is. It's kind of annoying as it restricts your movement quite a lot at parts and the fact that you can't have items means you cannot protect yourself from red shells, which makes being first place quite difficult. But it can be done if you are lucky. Thanks a lot for watching this video guys, I hope you enjoyed this little challenge that was a little bit different from my previous ones. If you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button and give this video a like. Do you want me to do that with other Mario Kart games? Just tell me down below. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram for more content and tap the cards on screen right now to watch more challenge videos. Alright, I'll see you in the next one.